call the meeting to order. Please call the roll. Dr. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Denton? Ms. Kelly? Yes. The next item on the agenda is the moment of silence to be led by the board vice president. Thank you. As we begin this meeting, let us pause for a 60 second moment of silence to reflect, meditate, pray, or engage in any other silent activity. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance to be led by Trey Armstrong. He's an eighth grade student at Oliver Middle School. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Stand, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hello everybody, my name is Trey Armstrong, and I would like to thank Ms. Waker and the Oliver staff that chose me to be here with you tonight. I consider it an honor and a privilege. I would also like to say a few things about Oliver Middle School. I truly feel that every teacher there has the student's best interest at heart, and I have enjoyed my middle school years, and I'm looking forward to what Broken Arrow has in store for me at high school years. Thanks again. May God bless all of you. Merry Christmas. Trey, real quick, can we get to take a picture with you? So if you'll stand out here in front. Good job, Trey. <laughs> <laughs> he might be prepared. <laughs> he was he was ready to go. Nice job. The next item on the agenda is the formal adoption of the agenda. Uh, just to advise everyone, I've not had any uh, issues, any items brought to my attention at this time. Recommend approval. Second. We have a motion and second to formally adopt the agenda. Please call the roll. Dr. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Are we getting the voting button here? No. <coughs> it, sh it showed. <coughs> Does it show my vote? Hold on. I didn't see them. Not I didn't I see, didn't see them either. Let me get back to it. Stites there we go. There okay. Got All right, great. Now. We're good. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. 
The next item on the agenda are the minutes of November the 9th, 2015. If there are any questions, certainly I would entertain those at this time. Recommend approval. Second. We have a motion and second to approve the November 9th, 2015 regular meeting minutes. Please call the roll. Dr. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Majors? Abstain. Mr. Allen? Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. The next item on the agenda are the comments from the public. Seeing that we do not have any, we'll move to the next item, which are the reports to the board. Ms. Casey Westman from the Broken Arrow Education Association. Good evening, Dr. Mendenhall, President Kelly and board. I'm here tonight to report that tomorrow the BAEA will be uh, going into negotiations with the district to talk about the collaboration um, schedule for next year on the calendar. Our hopes is that we can just do a minor language change and arrive at agreement for that. Um, uh, BAEA has also been watching the going on of the No Child Left Behind Act. On Thursday, December 10th, President Obama signed the Every Student Succeeds Act into law which will create an opportunity or a dashboard to help ensure equity and opportunity for all students. It will reduce the amount of standardized testing and de decoupling test scores and high stakes decision making. And it will also ensure that educators' voices are a part of the decision making at the federal, state, and local levels. So now we're just going to keep an eye on what's going to happen at the state level and then what would happen at the district level. I'd like to thank the board for their continued support and we look forward to having a very productive New Year's. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda items 8 through 40. Are there any questions? Recommend approval. Second. We have a motion and second to approve the general consent agenda items 8 through 40. Please call the roll. Dr. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. The next item under Superintendent and Board of Education Communications, Mr. Dwayne Thompson. Okay, I just want to briefly introduce you. You're familiar with Jeff Hewitt with the firm uh, that does our independent audit. You have, uh, we, we call it the independent audit, but it's also part of the CAFR. You have that in front of you. You also have a management letter from him. So he will cover those items with you. And if you have any questions, he, if he's unable to answer those, then I'll uh, chime in, but I'll turn it over to Jeff. Good evening, Honorable Board, Dr. Mendenhall. Thanks for having me here this evening. And really, thanks for moving me up a little bit. I really appreciate that. I have another meeting to go to here just a little bit. Uh, I'm just going to briefly talk, uh, hit a few things in this CAFR. Dwayne said I only had a minute, so I'm going to try to stay in, in between that. <laughs> um, on page 24, it's the Independent Auditor's Report. It's the main report, states audit the financial statements there at June 30, 2015. The paragraph on the management's responsibility for the financial statements and then our responsibility for the for our audit the bottom paragraph those our opinion or states in our opinion the financial statements referred to above present fairly in all material respects the financial position of the school <coughs> as of june 30 2015. so it is an unqualified good opinion um, after that is the management discussion and analysis and i'm not going to go through that with you but that's an area that's really good kind of summarizes the activities of the school for the year in that area. I'll flip over to just on page 41, uh, just briefly a couple items in the financials. This 41 is the statement of net positions, statement of net positions, excuse me. And the one thing you'll notice this year is because it has the net pension obligation on there. It's from last year. Uh, this is the first year you had to have that on there based on the general government accounting standards board number 68. So that is the main difference on there. It has to book the net pension obligation. And therefore, the net position is like 88 million, whereas the last year was about 161 million. So it has a pretty big effect on that uh, position, but it's something that was required to be done in this particular year. The report that I kind of like to look at, which I think is easier to look at, um, it's on page 49. It's the budget basis. Um, it has the budgets, original budget and the final budget. It also has the revenue, actual, and expenditures, and then the fund balance. So uh, I think of that's one of the schedules uh, I like to always point out because it's pretty easy to follow 
as far as what happens throughout the year for the district. <coughs> there was another attachment you got uh, with the other two required reports, report on generally accepted government auditing standards and also the federal reports. Uh, both of the reports are fairly similar you know, with internal controls and compliance with laws and regulations. There was also the federal schedule of assistance in there as well. Uh, there wasn't anything that we noted that was material non-compliance or any material weaknesses in internal controls. So everything looked uh, well. In the management letter, there were just a couple items that uh, I mentioned on there. Uh, one of them was the service organization audit report, which is we did obtain one of those for the Heartland uh, payment systems. That particular entity processes the financial information on the online student payments for the child attrition. And these reports are ones you request from those entities that shows that they'd gone through an examination of their internal controls and everything's in place on their end. And so we believe it's a good recommendation for you guys to request that every year. Uh, and I think there was also from the workers' comp group, we got one for them. Uh, anybody who uh, processes a lot of the transactions for the school, uh, it's a good idea to request this report to make sure that they are doing what they're supposed to be doing with the, on their end. And then the other one is with the activity fund uh, receiving. This is one that we see a lot in a lot of places. It's really hard to um, keep up with, I guess, uh, where they make sure to receive, once they receive the money, that they deposit it timely <coughs> based on some internal, control, internal audit reports that the district had done and the ones that uh, we looked at. There was a few of those we noticed. Uh, it's a hard uh, thing to stay on top of, and I know Donna does a good job with the activity funds and does the training with all of them. It's just something you gotta really got to stay on top of. So, But overall, uh, it, was, it was a good job, and I think Dwayne and, and his staff, Natalie and Kathy, they all do, uh, you know, a good job as well. So, any questions? I have one for Dwayne. W with uh, us holding that pension now as our liability, how does that affect our rate, our credit rating? It, Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> uh, so the credit agencies bond ratings have known that's coming and they also know that in Oklahoma that's really not our obligation that's the obligation of the state is just a reporting mechanism and so it has no impact the last time we sold bonds our credit or rating didn't change at all when Natalie and I had the rating call with the agency to disclose all the information we had told them how much the uh, even before the CAFR was finished we had told them how much would be in there and it didn't change it at all so they knew it was coming first and foremost and the second part of that is they knew um, that in Oklahoma, the unfunded liability for TRS is not our obligation, it's the state's, but we're reporting our portion. Um, so they already know that. We just mentioned why that's changed, Dwayne. Okay, well, the, uh, the standards board came out with a ruling. Um, as you can imagine, they're trying to do standards for all entities, not uh, and so there's a wide range of how those retirement plans are implemented. Some are district responsibility, some are state, and so forth and so on. So they tried to write a global uh, reporting item so those things are reported somewhere on the financials. Um, we argued and other states argued that that's not our responsibility, that the, the law in Oklahoma specifically states that that's a requirement uh, for the state of Oklahoma. but. Um, they said, well, we're going to do this universal for everyone, and so that's how it came into play. I'm not sure if you had a specific um, answer, <coughs> but that's really the, the, the crux of it. Now, they're going to review it again uh, just simply because everybody doesn't like how it's been implemented. Uh, but to, to get it on the books, that's what they've done. So this year... And I, I'm sorry if I, if I could just say one more thing. And Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong. It wouldn't be in the financials if we were reporting. If we weren't doing a CAFR, it'd be a note, correct? That's right. Right. So, because you know other districts don't do a CAFR, and we'll, I'll just you can pick any one. Let's say Bixby, they don't do a CAFR. It will be reported in a note in their audit, but it won't be reported in the financials because we're a full gap, uh, generally accepted counter principles. So that's why it's reported that way. So if you were comparing our audit to Bixby's, for instance, they won't have that line item. They'll have a note somewhere in the financials. With uh, this being the first year that it's, would you foresee that it could potentially have a, a burden on our credit rating? I don't think so. And as long as the, I mean, anything can change, but unless they change 
the makeup of who's responsible for it. The rating agencies know that. The second part of that is the progress that's being made on the fund. That number should continually de decline. Uh, because when we f actually when we first started, it was 88 million, and now it's 81 million, and I actually think it was higher than that the year before when they started the process. <coughs> so with, with over the course of years, um, you can see that it will gradually um, diminish. Thank you. If there are no other questions. Recommend Thank. approval. <coughs> second. We have a motion and second to approve <coughs> the receipt of the annual independent aud audit and capper for fiscal year 2014-15 as represented by Jeff Hewitt uh, with Sanders, Bledsoe, and Hewitt. Please call the roll. Dr. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Denton? Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Thank you. The next <coughs> item, uh, Dr. Mendenhall. Yes, Madam President, members of the board, I uh, tonight would like to present uh, to you that we hold a special board meeting for the purpose of an employee hearing. Um, this hearing uh, needs to be no longer than 30 days, calendar days, and no less than, uh, no longer than 30 days, and no less than 10. So that puts us really uh, around that first week of January. So if we could, uh, I have contacted our attorney, Mr. Mann, and uh, he is free on the evening of January 6th or 7th. Um, he prefers the 6th over the 7th. So I would like to throw that out there. If that does not work, uh, we'll, we'll uh, look for another date. But uh, I called him, I guess we called him yesterday, and uh, not yesterday, it would have been Friday. And um, those were the two dates that he had that week. Does anyone have a problem with uh, January 6th at 6 p.m.? Either of those days work. Okay, we, I would entertain a motion to that effect. Make a motion to approve the special board meeting for January 6th at 6 p.m. Second. second. We have a motion and second to approve a special board meeting on January 6th from, at 6 p.m. Please call the roll. Dr. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Denton? Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Next item under operations services, Ms. Michelle Bergwall. Good evening, President Kelly, Dr. Menhall, members of the board. I ask for your approval tonight on the construction management at risk contract for Flint Co. Inc. for the high school uh, renovation projects. Ms. Bergwall, I do have a question related to this. Uh, it is the classroom extent, in other words. Yes, it, the portion um, in the phase one bond that we'll be selling for the high school renovations, which will include the classroom, classroom. addition. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Recommend approval. Second. We have a motion and second to approve the execution of a contract between Broken Air Public Schools and Flint Co. Constructive Solutions for construction management services related to budgeting, bidding, and construction of the high school renovations project and authorize a chief operating officer to negotiate the terms of the contract. The total cost to the district will be paid from the 2015 bond funds. Please call the roll. Dr. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Denton? Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Next item. Our next one is our architectural selection of GH2 architects for the Kirkland Activity Complex <coughs> project. This will really just be the first phase of this project, um, which will be sold with the phase one bonds for the 2015 bond. And it will include the soccer relocation to that campus and also the renovation of the auditorium and gymnasium. Other questions? Rick, oh, go ahead. Well, I, I think we ought to make, make it clear, too, that GH2 will have this project, but that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the natatorium, i.e., swimming pool, will also be included in that. So do you want to talk about that? That's correct. The monies for <coughs> the natatorium are actually included in Phase 4 of the bond. Um, what GH2 will do for us on this project, though, is they will do a master plan for that site so that we know where that pool 
could possibly be located so that we make sure we don't locate anything uh, in its way when we get to that phase four of the bond. And you're correct, Dr. Manholland, that as we get to that phase four, we may or may not select GH2 to continue the work on that campus. Um, but we are asking them to help us get started and look at locating soccer out there and then getting our auditorium and our gymnasium back online as well. Yes, and thank you, Dr. Mendenhall, for bringing that forward. So. Recommend approval. Second. <coughs> we have a motion and second to approve the award of GH2 con uh, Architects to provide architectural services related to the design, bidding, and construction of the Kirk Kirkland Activity Complex Project Phase 1 and authorize a Chief Operating Officer to negotiate the terms of the contracts. The total cost to the district will be 7% of the cost of the work will be paid from the 2015 bond funds. Please call the roll. Dr. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Denton? Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. The next item under business services, Ms. Natalie Ena. Good evening. We're almost halfway through this fiscal year. Um, in general fund revenue, we have um, collected approximately 36% of our state aid allocation of our um, initial $46.6 million allocation. We are expecting a, our midterm adjustment after the new year um, based on the October 1 count and estimate um, a potential increase of about $48,600 if um, all the factors hold true and um, the state does not make any adjustment to these factors, but that is our estimate um, for <coughs> our midterm adjustment. So the excise board will meet here pretty quickly. Is that what happens? And then they approve it and then we get our midterm? No, the, the state will state will be reviewing all the October accounts. Okay. And then they will total those up and whether or not there is sufficient funds for maintenance keep the factors the same, we'll decide whether they do or not. If they don't, then they'll make whatever necessary reduction they need to or increase if that was the case. And then they'll... Do but the we don't have a date necessarily of... Usually by the, the second week in January that we okay. normally get that. Now what's coming up is the excise pool for the, the certification process for next year's budget at the state level. That's what's coming up. Okay. Thank you. And the other big change that you'll see um, in January is we'll um, receive our big ad valorem payment, um, which will have a big impact in general fund and also our building fund revenue. Um, you'll see a big boost in revenue and building fund, which um, to date we've basically been uh, living off our um, ending fund balance from the previous year. And um, so we've been staying very conservative with our building fund expenditures due to the limited revenue stream in this fund. Child nutrition, you can see we're tracking along pretty well. Um, our local and federal sources um, show strong signs of participation um, at the campus level, level for, for our students. And also in January, we should receive another um, big state uh, source of revenue from our um, claims um, up through January. <coughs> General fund expenditures, obviously salaries and benefits are pretty well even um, to where we were last year. Um, everything else is pretty much remaining constant. Um, we haven't really had any big um, unusual expenses in um, general fund so far. We're pretty comparable to where we were last year in building fund. As I mentioned, we are trying to stay very conservative in this fund. Um, our uh, supplies and um, materials have remained um, consistent with where we were last year. We did have some one-time expenses last year in building fund that we are not seeing um, this year that we uh, paid for, which um, is helping maintain our fund balance. Child nutrition, uh, the good thing is our food expenditures have actually um, not cut up with where we were last year. Um, food prices haven't been as volatile, volatile as they were last year, so um, that's staying at a good pace um, from where we were at uh, last year. Child Nutrition also had some one-time um, construction expenses last year that they paid for um, that we're not seeing uh, recur um, this year. And um, the ending fund balance um, that you see for 2015 is what we reported in our CAFR, and um, we're, we're estimating staying right at the $14 uh, million level for um, the end of 2016. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, are there any questions? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> My next item is the treasurer's reports as of um, the end of November 2015. Cash balances report reflect a total of $24,205,000 in assets. The investment ledgers show uh, district total investments of $14,490,000. The fund security and deposit report show a total of $40,425,000 in collateral pledged to the district. Total deposits requiring, requiring collateral are $15,422,000, leaving an available cash balance of collateral in the amount of $25,004,000. Any questions on this? Mm -mm. Thank you. My next item is the activity funds report at, as at the end of November. In the activity funds, receipts total $3,397,000, disbursements total $2,028,000, with an ending cash balance of $3,217,000. Any questions on the activity funds? Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. The next item, Ms. Kathy Metavallis. <clears throat> Good evening. <clears throat> My first item are the encumbrance reports uh, for the period of time November 5th to December 10th, 2015. The total on these encumbrance reports comes to $4,120,332.86. And I would request your approval of the encumbrance reports. Okay. Are there questions? Recommend approval. Second. We have a motion and second to approve the encumbrance reports for all funds for the 2015-16 fiscal year. Please call the roll. Dr. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Denton? Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Next item. For the same period of time, November 5th through December 10th, 2015, um, we show a, a change order showing a decrease of $71,394.68. So I'd recommend your approval of those change orders. Okay, I would Make entertain any questions if, if you have any. If not, a motion. Make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and second to approve the change order reports for general fund, cooperative fund, building fund, worker compensation, bond funds, gift funds, child nutrition fund for the 2015-16 fiscal year. Please call the roll. Dr. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Denton? Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The next item, Mr. Ed Fager. Good evening. Dr. Mendenhall, President Kelly, members of the board. Uh, I'm here tonight to uh, present item number 50, which is a revision to our wellness policy number 4440. Um, this policy is being revised to provide some additional detailed information regarding the nutrition guidelines, the nutrition education curriculum, uh, phys physical activity guidelines, and the function of the healthy and safe school committees at each school site. Uh, with the goals of promoting academic success and encouraging lifelong healthy habits. Um, these revisions have been sent to the district's legal counsel for review. This okay. is just a first reading this evening, so. First reading, so if any of the board have a question, certainly right. they could contact you to, to obtain that. So yes. at this point, unless there are some questions, then we would just move forward and wait <coughs> until the second reading. Right. Any other questions? None. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Next item is Mr. Dwayne Thompson. As Casey mentioned, we have um, the need to reopen negotiations regarding uh, the uh, collaboration time. And so we are proposing that we do that, uh, are requesting the board do that. We have already scheduled the date for tomorrow in, in anticipation. Um, and our goal is to uh, resolve that minor language change tomorrow, then put that out for a vote, <laughs> and then on January 11th, the board approve to ratify that portion of the agreement. What that will allow us to do is be doing all the preparation work for the next school year with that in mind and everybody understanding uh, those parameters. So uh, if you have any questions, I would uh, answer those for you at this time. If there are no questions, I would entertain a motion. Recommend approval. Second. We have a motion and second to approve the reopening <coughs> of negotiations with the BAEA in order to revise language for the 2016-17 school year. Please call the roll. Dr. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. 
Mr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Denton? Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Next item. Okay, the last item I have is uh, a little unique, uh, but at uh, one point uh, we had a injury caused at one of our campuses and uh, ran that through our insurance company, uh, NACO at the time, and they hired uh, the firm uh, Steed Lee and Neal to represent the district and the insurance company, which they did, and that matter has been resolved. Now that in the, uh, the person is now suing Hussey uh, uh, Seating Company, and that, comp and that uh, firm has asked uh, the same firm to represent, which uh, represents a conflict of interest, uh, because they're representing two firms related to the same instance, the same two companies related to the same instance. I have run this past, uh, obviously, our legal counsel. And they're agreeable as long as the last portion of that is the most important part is conditioned upon the defendant, Hussey Seating Company, not asserting any legal or equitable claims for relief against the school district in said litigation. So there is a waiver that I've added that language to, and uh, by doing that, they would be able to proceed as the representation on that case. Okay. <coughs> any other questions? I would entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and second to approve allowing the Broken Arrow Public Schools to grant the waiver of any conflicts of interest requested by the law firm of Steedley Neal in connection with their defense of <coughs> defendant Hussey Seating Company in the lawsuit uh, style Joyce Kessler Plaintiff versus Hussey Seating Company and the Oklahoma Automatic Door Company, Inc. Defendants, case number CJ 2015 2078, District Court of Tulsa County, Oklahoma. Conditioned upon the defendant. Uh, Hussey Seating Company not asserting any legal or equitable claims for relief against the school district in the litigation. Please call the roll. Dr. Williamson. Yes. Mr. Majors. Yes. Mr. Allen. Yes. Mr. Denton. Yes. Ms. Kelly. Yes. The next item is new business. Since we do not have any new business, we'll move to the next item, which is the executive <coughs> session. I make a motion we move to executive session. Second. We have a, a motion and second to uh, move into executive session to discuss the purchase or appraisal of real property pursuant to Oklahoma Statute Title 25, Section 307B3, and to discuss the superintendent contract pursuant to Oklahoma Statute Title 25, Section 307B1 and B7 of the Oklahoma Open Meeting Act. Please call the roll. Dr. Williamson? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Denton? Yes. Ms. Kelly? Yes. Really glad that the leadership class from the high school joined us tonight. I think they're all around the back. So you got off easy because this might have been the shortest board meeting ever. And so minutes. you guys have time to go to Sonic and tell your parents you're not home yet, but make sure you call on the way out. All right. So you guys are dismissed. Thank you.